Hi my dear friends and welcome back to another Bad Batch video. Today we're going to be taking a look at what happened to the surviving Kaminoans after the rise of the Empire and we're also going to explore the possibility of a Kaminoan uprising in the Bad Batch. So without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. As we know from the show, Rampart and the Empire at large has lost faith in the Kaminoans and their clones. In a big systematic change known as Project War Mantle, all clones will soon be replaced by conscripted recruits. This will make the Kaminoans and their cloning facility redundant. Now while Lamasu wants to create a third wave of superior clones using Omega as the template, it doesn't look like they're going to be successful, especially since we know the eventual outcome that the Empire is going to take over the Kaminoan facility and probably kill Lamasu and the other master cloners as well. Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith 2, confirms the eventual fate of Kamino. We're probably even going to see this take place later on in the Bad Batch, probably in episode 14, which is appropriately called War Mantle. So we know that the Kaminoans are doomed, and while there is the assumption that their entire species was wiped out, we know canonically that this is not the case. In the canon novel Pirate's Price, Hondo Naka briefly talks about the Kaminoans after the Empire took over. While he does describe it as brutal, he clarifies that he saw fewer Kaminoans in the galaxy after the Empire's rise, but the wording does suggest there are still some of them out there. Now this is where we get to something really interesting. In the latest issue of War of the Bounty Hunters, we even see a Kaminoan alive and well over 20 years after the Clone Wars ended. This is truly a fascinating easter egg to see, and while this Kaminoan is a background character, many questions questions arise from its existence. For example, when did surviving Kaminoans leave Kamino? How did they escape the Empire? Are they regular citizens or did some of the scientists survive as well? If Kaminoan cloners did survive and are alive and well during the original trilogy and beyond, is it possible that they're working with the Imperial Remnant by the time of the Mandalorian? We know that the Empire replaced the Kaminoans with human scientists such as Dr. Pershing, but they might have used the surviving Kaminoans for their knowledge of genetics and cloning. If this is indeed the case, then we might see a Kaminoan in live action again, either in the Book of Boba Fett or the Mandalorian. Bear in mind, live action Kaminoans have only appeared once in Attack of the Clones. Since we're talking about Kaminoans again with the release of the Bad Batch, this would be a truly amazing tie-in and something I could definitely see Dave Filoni doing. And by the way guys, on the subject of War of the Bounty Hunters, I need to reiterate that in many ways it's a direct prequel to the Book of Boba Fett, and provides insight into his journeys between the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. So going back to the Kaminoan survivors, many of them would undoubtedly just be regular citizens and most likely found refuge on other worlds just like we see in this comic. But I also want to point out that under regular circumstances before the Empire, the Kaminoans were isolationists, which basically means that they never intermingled with other species and other worlds unless it was profitable. As we saw in episode 9 of the Bad Batch, the Kaminoans had a cloning facility on the world of Borovio, and this basically proves my point that their off-world pursuits were for self-interest and profit. Now, due to Imperial occupation, the remaining Kaminoans would have no choice but to leave Kamino for any world that they would be safe on, but like many others, they would have to create a new life for themselves. So at this point, with the question largely answered, I want to explore the potential events that will lead to the near extinction of the Kaminoan species. We know for a fact that Project War Mantle is going to spark great tensions between the Empire and the Kaminoans, but what about a potential Kaminoan uprising? This is something that Star Wars Battlefront 2 fans have desperately wanted to see ever since the game came out. At the moment, any reference to the Kaminoan uprising is reduced to Legends material, but we would all love to see it being brought into canon. So my dear Megalorians, in case you're not familiar, let me break it down for you. The Kaminoan uprising was when a group of Kaminoans were fed up with the new empire and basically they went rogue. They used their cloning resources to grow an army of troopers to combat the new recruits. In many ways, the Bad Batch so far has been hinting that we might see this very soon. The third wave of clones that Lama Su wants to model after Omega's DNA might very well be the army that the Kaminoans use to combat Rampart's recruits. Upon learning of the insurrection, the Empire hired a young Boba Fett to sabotage the cloning facilities 
of Topoka City. Boba Fett's childhood spent in the city granted him intricate knowledge of the facility's layout, and he led the Imperial Army to a crushing defeat of the new clones. The Kaminoan leadership themselves were destroyed when their escape transports were shot down as they attempted to flee. Before the battle was over, Boba Fett extracted a sample of Jango Fett's DNA and delivered it to his Imperial clients. The uprising led to a restructuring of the Imperial cloning policy, and the previous model of centralized cloning sources was abandoned in favor of having a wide variety of cloning centers and genetic templates. As Hondo Naka said, this was absolutely brutal, and honestly, I can see something like this being brought into canon in the Bad Batch. If any Kaminoan we've seen is going to survive, it probably will be Nala Se. But let's be real here, she probably will also face her demise, because not only is she a renowned cloner, but she's got close ties with Lama Su. We haven't gotten the Kaminoan subplot in the Bad Batch for a couple of episodes now, so it will be interesting to see what they do next. They might send out another bounty hunter for Omega, or they might come up with another strategy to enforce their so-called contingency plan. What's great about this show is that we know the outcome for the Kaminoans, but we don't know how Dave Filoni and Jennifer Corbett are going to get us to that point. There's basically so much unknown. There could be some kind of battle or uprising that is different to the one that we know from Battlefront, and we have to remember that Omega did not exist when Battlefront 2 came out. And now that she's in the Star Wars universe at the same point in the timeline, things could be very different, especially since she's Boba Fett's sister. I can't help but feel that when he finds out, he's going to try and defend her rather than the new Empire. And another big question, is Boba Fett going to meet Omega in the Bad Batch, or is Lucasfilm going to hold out until the Book of Boba Fett, where she might come into live action? Now when and if the Kaminoan Uprising takes place, we have to factor in another huge detail, one that was not around when Battlefront 2 came out, the existence of the Bad Batch. Will they make a stand against the new Empire, especially if they get called upon to rescue Hera and her parents? And when the Kaminoan Uprising takes place, are they going to fight against the Empire or the Kaminoans? I turn it over to you guys, what do you think is going to happen in the remaining episodes of the Bad Batch, and are you looking forward to it? If you guys enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and a huge welcome if you are, and also look out for my full breakdown of tomorrow's episode 12. May the force be with each and every one of you, I'm Star Wars Meg wishing you a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.